I call Baroness Jones of Whitchurch. My lords, in the Commons yesterday, George Eustace once again tried to portray the fishing settlement as a good deal, whereas the truth is that it's unravelling as we speak. No wonder UK fishers feel angry and betrayed. You would have thought that the negotiations of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement would have tied down the future access to uh, access of live uh, bivalve mol mollusks to the EU at the time of the agreement, rather than as an afterthought when the damage to the sector has already been done. As a result, hundreds of tons of stock have had to be dumped and the multi-million pound industry has ground to a halt. My Lords, these are more than teething problems. The future of the sector is at stake. The Minister has described the negotiations as technical discussions. But can I ask, what is to stop the EU reopening other aspects of the fishing deal in return for a settlement on live mollusks? And in the meantime, can the Minister clarify exactly what compensation will be made available to those whose livelihoods are affected by the loss of that EU market? Will they have access to the £23 million disruption fund made available for other fishers whose markets have been disrupted? And will the government consider increasing this fund now that many more fishers appear to need compensation? To the Commissioner Kira Keedes, because what we want to do is to restore the trade of undeparated live bivalve uh, mollusks. That is what the issue is in this particular matter. And we think that the interpretation the Commission have come to is not correct. And we uh, wish to have discussions with the Commission about it. I think that a 25% uplift in fishing opportunities is a very important part of the trade and cooperation agreement, and we will be working on that. And as the government has announced, not only is there a 20 three million pounds uh, fund for those that have been in difficulty in these early stages, but we are also going to be investing in fishing in a hundred million pound uh, fund over the next three years. I think there is a lot of promise and a lot of opportunity for British fishing interests and the shellfish industry as well. Baroness Bakewell. My Lords, it is unfortunate for the government that the BBC is currently screening its series on the Cornwall fishing industry filmed last year. All see the dramatic effect on the Cornish crab industry of the withdrawal of the Chinese market. And now the EU is refusing to take their shellfish, which was previously acceptable. My Lords, the statement says that the scallops are less affected than other bivalve mollusks. This is not the impression that I am gaining from the television coverage of the scallop fisheries in Scotland. However, can the Minister explain what the exact problem is with the Class B waters around Wales and the South West? If these water was, waters were acceptable before the 3rd of February, why not afterwards? The Baroness has hit on the point on why we wish to have discussions with the Commission. This is because we think the interpretation that they have that this is a, a, a matter uh, of public health. The point is that all mollusks that are exported from Class B have to, have to be depurated. That is what is undertaken by businesses near to the market in, on the continent, and that is what we're seeking to find redress from, because they have, the Commission already said in September of 2019, uh, and I can put the copies of this correspondence with the letter to the Commissioner in the House Library, makes it very clear that these, these sorts of mollusks exported for pure, pure, purification can be certified. And so we think there is a, an issue we need to clarify with them. What Lily? Uh, my Lords... Uh, is not this and other measures taken recently by the EU to punish the UK for leaving its jurisdiction a flagrant abuse not only of EU's own laws but also of several international laws like the WTO SPS agreement which says member states shall accept the sanitary and phytosanitary measures of other member states as equivalent even if these measures differ from their own. Our, ours, ours are of course identical and also from the recent uh, TCA, 
which says that each party shall ensure that SPS measures are not applied in a manner which would constitute arbitrary or unjustifiable discrimination against the other party's territory where identical or similar SPS conditions exist, which they do in this case. I hope my noble friend will make this lawlessness apparent to this House, which always maintains the importance of upholding international law. My Lords, again, my noble friend, it is, is correct to raise this point, and it's why we and the Secretary of State wrote to Commissioner Kiriakidis yesterday, because we would wish to meet uh, her and her officials, because we simply don't understand the legal interpretation of what has come out of the Commission very recently, which is entirely contrary to what, to what we have been told before that time. Lord Kilcluny. My, my Lords, the Minister will be aware that mollusks cannot be transferred across the United Kingdom from Great Britain into Northern Ireland, all due to the Northern Ireland Protocol. Is the Minister aware that there is today a meeting between the European Union and the Irish Government to reach an agreement whereby all new laws introduced by the EU which may affect Northern Ireland will first of all have to be submitted to the Dublin Government and get their approval. This, my Lords, is a united Ireland in operation, in practice. The approval of events in Northern Ireland is now subject to the control and decision of Dublin and not of London. My Lords, I think that what the Neville Lord has said is very important, and that is why I think that so far as the working of the, of the Northern Ireland Protocol and the fact that uh, Northern Ireland is part, clearly, of, uh, of the United Kingdom, uh, our quartet of nations, I think it's very important that the meeting that the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster has with the Vice President of the Commission on Thursday, all of these points are very important. We wish to conduct trade as good neighbours, but within the context that we are a United Kingdom. Lord Knight of Weymouth. My Lords, I have recently been in touch with my friend Ronnie Norcoy, who operates boats from Orkney. He tells me that this ban is only the latest in a series of crises. First, the restriction of the China market, then COVID closing the hospitality sector market. Third was the wave of red tape and export chaos caused by Brexit. And now the Seafood Producers Resilience Fund, which barely covers two weeks of his operating costs. These are not teething troubles. When will the government get serious about rescuing this vital sector that is fast going out of business? Minister. My Lords, that is precisely why we wish in the matter of this uh, question to discuss with Commissioner Kiriakides a situation that we don't think is founded in correct interpretation of the law. Clearly, fishing and the shellfish industry have, are going through difficulties, as the nobles lord said, part because of reduction in demand because of COVID, and part, yes, because of issues that we need to resolve. But in terms of the long term, this is a very important part of our food supply, and we will be supporting it. Earl Keith Ness. My Lord, it is frustrating that the EU are behaving in the way that they are on so many issues. Could my noble friend uh, tell me, please, whether it's possible to get the Class B waters up to Class A, as in Scotland? And secondly, my Lord, uh, is it economically feasible to have our own processing uh, and cleansing plants here so that we can produce the end product rather than having to let the Europeans do that for us. Minister. It makes an important point, which is that we need all to work on improving water quality. This is part of the 25-year environment plan, and indeed, so far as the environment bill is concerned. What I would say is that the depuration capacity in GB, we believe is sufficient to depurate all oysters produced in GB, but there is an insufficient cover of depuration of mussels, for instance. And we would certainly be looking to, uh, at 
the 100 million fishing fund could be used to support traders setting up, for instance, a depuration center. And we will continue to work on exploring all of these options. Lord Truscott. My Lords, UK shellfish catches were valued at £393 million in 2019. So this is a very serious matter for the fishing industry, especially in the Southwest. Is this not yet another example of a loose end left over from a botched negotiation with the EU over Brexit? And can I ask, does the noble lord, the minister, now think Brussels is trying to punish the UK over leaving the EU? Minister. M my lords, um, we have written, the Secretary of State has written to Commissioner Kyriakidis in a very spend friendly and constructive spirit. This particular issue so relates to undeparated live bivalve uh, mollusks. This is, the, this is the issue that we are now addressing. And I very much hope that the discussions will resolve this matter so that this important trade can be resumed. It's important for exports. It's also important, my lords, to all of those businesses on the continent that have set up depuration uh, outlets because they wish to be close to the final destination market. And I think that this is where discussions with the EU are going to be very important. 